Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Name News Update. It's Friday, May 20th, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for today from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. Members of the Mohawk tribe who served as code talkers during World War II will be presented with a special honor on Memorial Day weekend. Congressional silver medals will be awarded May 28th during a ceremony to be held on the St. Regis Reservation on the Canadian border in northern New York. Surviving Mohawk code talker Louis Levi Oaks and family members of a deceased veterans will be honored. American Indians such as the Navajo use their native languages to send coded messages that couldn't be deciphered by the enemy during World War II. Another 33 tribes also had code talkers in the U.S. military, including seven Mohawks from the St. Regis Reservation. Congress passed the Code Talkers Recognition Act in 2008 to honor the achievements and service of these important Indian troops, and the U.S. Mint created specially designed medals in honor of each tribe's contribution to the war effort. The Morongo Band of Mission Indians signed an agreement with South Korea to explore business opportunities together. The accord is believed to be the first of its kind between a tribal government and the Republic of Korea. Morongo will be working with the Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency in Los Angeles on projects involving hospitality, culture, entertainment, retail, green technology, transportation, and construction. It took 20 years for a dream of having the Lord's Prayer translated into the Nakoda Sioux language to come to fruition. But for former Alexis Nakoda Sioux Nation Chief Rod Alexis, the hard work was well worth the time it took. Over the years, Alexis embarked on a journey across the Great Sioux tribes from his own nation northwest of Edmonton and down into the United States to translate from elders the full Lord's Prayer. The end goal was to bring the transcribed prayer to the famous Pater Noster Church in Jerusalem, Israel to join the over 60 plaques in different languages from around the world that bear the Lord's Prayer. Alexis joined a delegation including current Alexis Chief Tony Alexis who said the Alexis Nakota Sioux tribe happened to get the last plaque spot available at the site to proudly display their language. From Israel, they traveled to Rome, where Chief Tony Alexis was asked to deliver hundreds of prayer requests on behalf of people from his own community and across Canada to the Pope. Chief Tony Alexis admitted it was overwhelming to meet with the Pope, but his main goal was to bring the concerns of his people to Francis. He gifted the Pope a hand-painted drum and talked with Francis about an issue that he believes is the current pressing crisis facing humanity, and that was climate change. Then they parted with a hug that he brought back home to share with his people. To Lincoln Elder Elaine Elizabeth Abraham passed away May 16th at the age of 87. Abraham was raised in a traditional household where her first language was to Lincoln. She learned English at the Village Elementary School, and after graduating at age 17, she studied nursing at Arizona Sage Memorial Nursing School in Navajo country, and passed her final test with some of the highest scores ever achieved. She is said to have been the first to link at registered nurse. Returning to Alaska, she worked for the Indian Health Service in Bethel, Sitka, and Anchorage. She was supervisor of nursing at the Mount Edcombe Hospital in Sitka, where she helped create the Southeast Health Aid Program, the model for providing health care in remote parts of Alaska to this day. After retiring from nursing in her 40s, she went back to college and earned a wall full of diplomas, including a bachelor's in human services, a master's degree in teaching, multi-ethnic education, a certificate in native linguistics, and an associate's degree in anthropology. For the rest of her life, she continued to pursue higher education, working on a doctorate in her 70s. The Cherokee Nation recently launched a new website dedicated exclusively to connecting the Cherokee Nation citizens residing beyond the tribe's 14-county jurisdiction with information on available federal and tribal services. The website, CherokeesAtLarge.org, features information on home loans, health care services, education and scholarships, and more. At-Large citizens can subscribe to an email list for updates on community events and Cherokee Nation information. An interactive map displaying all of the Indian Health Service health care facilities available to Native Americans are also featured on the new website. Nearly 205,000 of the Cherokee Nation's 330,000 citizens live outside of the tribe's jurisdiction. Many of these citizens belong to one of the nearly two dozen at-large Cherokee community organizations across the country. 
In Oklahoma alone, there are more than 90,000 Cherokee Nation citizens who reside inside the state, but outside the tribe's 14-county tribal boundary. Through negotiated state compacts, all Cherokee Nation citizens in Oklahoma are eligible for a Cherokee Nation hunting and fishing license and Cherokee vehicle tags. The new website has information on both of these opportunities. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the NABE News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.